Hey guys, welcome back to the DNN Medical Series. It's your girl Nikki, and we're jumping into some anatomy today, and we're gonna talk all about the parotid gland. Basically, the salivary gland. So we have three major salivary glands: the parotid gland, the submandibular gland, and the sublingual glands. But we're gonna focus mainly on the biggest one. And it's the parotid glands. We're going to talk about its features, some relationships, the nerve supply, and a little bit of applied anatomy. So I got this picture from Ken Hub, and I think it sums it up pretty much everything. Well, not everything, but the entire physical look of the parotid. You can see it right here. This is the parotid gland. And here you see this thing coming from the parotid gland. That's the parotid duct. So <clears throat> this is basically a general picture of how the parotid gland looks. And as I said before, I'll be using different images. And at the end, I'll use a real life or a real, I'll show you guys a real life parotid gland. So you can appreciate what it looks like in the actual specimen. So the parotid gland is located between the external of acoustic meatus that's a, right at the air right there and the ramus of the mandible about here and the sternocleidomastoid muscle so that's basically the situation so from up here to down here so it's almost like a pyramid all right hope you guys understand that there is also an accessory parotid that lies between the zygomatic arch and the parotid gland. So as said before, parotid gland is the largest salivary gland. It's situated between the external acoustic meatus and the ramus of the mandible and the sternocleidomastoid muscle. There's also an accessory parotid gland. So there is also this thing that covers or encloses the parotid gland, and we call that the parotid capsule. So the parotid capsule is basically an investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Take note of the name, deep cervical fascia. Not superficial, but deep cervical fascia. And this deep cervical fascia that encloses the parotid gland, it splits. So it splits into a superficial lamina and a deep lamina. So you know the superficial lamina will be at the front, the deep would be at the back. A key thing to note is that the superficial lamina is thicker than the deep lamina. So if something is at the front, they're big and strong. If you're at the back, you're little and you're shy, so you don't do much. So that's the deep and superficial lamina. The superficial is thicker, the deep one is a bit thinner. And a very important point is that the deep one, even though it's thin, is saying, I'm going to do something today. I have some function. So my function is I'm going to create something. So the deep lamina creates the stylomandibular ligament. So the stylomandibular ligament is basically a ligament from the styloid process to the mandible or the ramus, the posterior ramus of the mandible. Again, the parotid capsule encloses the parotid gland. It's formed from the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia. This fascia splits into a thick superficial lamina and a thin deep lamina. And that deep lamina wants to be into things, so it created something, which is a stylomandibular ligament. So that's basically the parotid capsule. So let's jump into the external features of the parotid gland. So the parotid gland is almost like a three-sided pyramid. And in my opinion, it's inverted. So you look, this is the base of the pyramid. And here is the apex of the pyramid. That's how it's located in the body. So it has four surfaces. Some people include a superior surface, which is the base of the pyramid. A <clears throat> superficial surface you can see right here an anterior medial surface here and a posterior medial surface it's like a medial gland in my opinion everything is so medial so you have a superior a superficial an anterior medial and a posterior medial 
it also has some borders so it has three borders so if it has an anterior border it must have a posterior border hope you guys can see my cursor so an anterior border posterior border and a medial border it's like a medial it's like a media gland in my humble opinion so i've said before four surfaces superior superficial anterior medial posterior medial three borders anterior posterior and medial it has a base and an apex so we're just going to jump into a little relation of the parotid what is located close to the parotid gland so I just told you guys the different surfaces and the borders so you guys can orientate yourself, right? So here we have the little green thing here, like that's the party gland. Here I said, remember I said the external auditory meatus or the acoustic meatus was superior, remember that? So it's right here, right up the air, right about there. So you just orientate yourself. So that's superior, that's the base. Down here is the apex. This is a party duct. You can see here. And this is the accessory parotid gland that we said is, is present sometimes. So now we're orientated. So we're going to look on a different relation. So this, this cartoon gives us like the different glands and muscle. I'll use another one to show you guys the vessels that are in relation to the parotid. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the and at the apex as well, we have a muscle, a nerve, and two veins. So the muscle is the posterior belly of the digastric. The nerve is the cervical branch of the facial nerve. So the cervical branch of the facial nerve. And the two veins are the two divisions of the retromandibular vein, anterior and posterior retromandibular vein. Again, a muscle, posterior belly of the digastric, a nerve, facial nerve, two veins, the retromandibular veins. That's for the apex. You'd find those things down here. So for the superior surface, up here where I said the external auditory meatus was, we have this, the external auditory meatus. We also have the TMJ joint. We also have the vessels like the superior temporal vessels and the auricular temporal nerve. So we have a nerve, vessels, joint, and the external acoustic meatus. So that's superiorly. So yeah, just try to orientate yourself and think to yourself what would be here and you can definitely identify what is there. So if it's the external acoustic meatus, think about the TMJ up here. Think <clears throat> think about the, the superior temporal vessels. It's superior. You'd expect the superior temporal vessels to be here as well as the auricular temporal nerve because this nerve provides sensory to the parotid gland sensory innovation to the parotid gland so we spoke about the apex we spoke about yeah we spoke about the apex we spoke about the superior surface now let's talk about the superficial surface so the superficial surface of the parotid gland has these things as you see me listed right here so it starts with the skin so the first thing you're outside, you're going to see your skin. Below your skin, we have the superficial fascia and its contents. Remember we said the superficial fascia was thicker than the deep one. And then we have the branches of the greater auricular nerve as well as the parotid fascia necks, basically. And we have the deep parotid lymph nodes so it's like you're going in so we have skin superficial fascia great auricular nerve and basically the parotid lymph nodes next all right okay so let's talk about like the relation some more relations remember we said there were three surfaces there. Now let's just take a quick look at the anterior medial surface. So remember we're talking about the relations. So the relations of the parotid are very important before we jump in anything. We have to orientate ourselves, get our relations down pat and we'd be good. So let's talk about the anterior medial. So this is like a medial thing for me and the, the, the first letter of medial is M. So the anterior medial surface has four M's. So it's the masseter 
the medial pterygoid, the mandibular ramus, and the mandibular joint. So that's basically the anterior medial surface. So when you think of anterior medial surface of the parotid gland, think about the four M's. Masseter, medial pterygoid, mandibular ramus, and mandibular joint. Posterior now, so the posterior medial surface of your parotid gland is just two bones. Think about what is posterior, what is at the back of your head. So that's basically the mastoid process and the styloid process. So those bones back there. Remember, anterior medial, the four M's. Masseter, medial pterygoid, mandibular ramus, and the mandibular joint. Posteriorly, we have two bones, the mastoid process and the styloid process. Now we're just going to jump into the stuff that are embedded into the parotid gland. They're like in it. They're embedded within the parotid gland. So we have the facial nerve. The facial nerve is embedded in the parotid gland, but it does not supply it. So that's a key thing to remember. The facial nerve is just bridging something to say, I need, I'm going to take this route to go somewhere else, but I'm not supplying it. I'm not giving it anything. I'm just going to take from it, but I'm not giving it anything. So the facial nerve embedded in the parotid gland, as well as a deep parotid group of lymph nodes. Remember we say that was a layer in the superficial area. When you go skin, superficial this, you go down to the deep parotid lymph node. So that's also embedded. So we said facial nerve, parotid lymph node, and retromandibular vein. Remember we said the retromandibular vein was at the apex. So we have both divisions. We have the anterior division and the posterior division of the retromandibular vein. So those are embedded as well. So it's basically the same thing over and over, as well as the external carotid artery. So those are all embedded. So let's go over the, the things that are embedded within the parotid again. So we have the external carotid artery, the retromandibular vein that we said was at the apex. We have the facial nerve embedded, as well as the deep parotid lymph nodes. So as we said before, the parotid gland is a pyramidal or a three-sided pyramid. It's the largest salivary gland. Now let's jump into the parotid duct. So the parotid duct, right here you can see this thing like a line coming from the parotid. This is a parotid duct. So it's thin wall. It's about 5 cm long and it runs medially. So it's going... So it runs medially and it empties in the vestibule of the mouth opposite the second molar tooth. Very important information. The parotid duct... Thin, it's thick walled, my bad. Thick wall is very thick. It's five centimeters long. It runs medially. It empties in the vestibule of the mouth opposite the second molar tooth. Not the premolar, the second molar tooth. Not the first molar, the second molar tooth. So that's very key information. Duck runs medially, empties in the vestibule of the mouth, opposite to the second molar tooth. And what does this duck pierce while it's running? So it pierces some things that we give the mnemonic B B B C. B B B C. So the party duck pierces the boxinator muscle. It pierces the buccal part of fat. It pierces the buccopharyngeal fascia and the C, it pierces the cheek mucosa. Again, the duct, the thick duct that is running medially from the parotid gland empties in the vestibule opposite the second molar tooth, pierces the boxinator, the buccal part of fat, the buccopharyngeal fascia, as well as the cheek mucosa. So that's the parotid duct. So the nerve supply of the parotid gland now. So the parotid gland is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. Parasympathetic glossopharyngeal nerve, which is secretor motor, secretes saliva. So this nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, is coming from the inferior salivatory nucleus. Not the superior salivatory nucleus, but the inferior salivatory nucleus, which goes down to the otic ganglion. 
So basically, remember, key things to remember, inferior cell and veterinary nucleus, otic ganglion, glossopharyngeal nerve, parasympathetic to the parotid gland. All right? And sympathetic is basically a plexus around the external carotid artery. Sensory to the parotid gland, we have auricular temporal nerve. As I said before, remember I said that was in the relation. Here, it's a, it's a superior relation. You can see it here. So it's superior, and so it gives sensory. So it's like, I'm up here. Why not just give it some? And it give it some sensory innovation. The auricular temporal, temporal as well as the great auricular nerve also gives some sub sensory supply. Again, parasympathetic glossopharyngeal nerve from the inferior salivary nucleus coming down to the otic ganglion supplying the parotid gland parasympathetic sensory innovation auricular temporal nerve as well as the great auricular nerve and some applied anatomy well with problems with the the parotid glands when you hear people have say they have mums they can have painful swellings you can have cancers of the parotid glands and you can also have a syndrome called the phrase syndrome the, the auricular temporal nerve that we said that gives the sensory supply to the parotid is damaged so when there is injury to the auricular temporal nerve we get phrase syndrome and this is basically a sweating over the parotid area so right over where the parotid is, gland is located, you just have a sweating right there and the face be, be, uh, looks flush. So you have parotid uh, gland sweating over the parotid as well as facial flushing. So that's like damage to the auricular temporal nerve, typically during surgery and so on. And that's what we call Prey syndrome. So that's basically it for the parotid gland let me just show you guys a real real parotid gland and we can just look at the basic structures so here we have a real life parotid gland so you can look carefully here is superior we have the base of the pyramid down here is the apex and here we have this little opening we call it the external acoustic meatus i hope you guys are staying with me here we have the parotid duct that runs medially. It's thick walled about five centimeters long and it empties in the vestibule of the mouth opposite the second molar tooth. So that's the parotid duct. Pierced by the parotid duct, we have B, 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 C. Hope you guys remember all those mnemonics that I've used. Here we have the apex of the parotid. What did we say was at the apex of the parotid? The posterior belly of the digastric muscle, the cervical branch of the facial nerve, as well as the two branches of the retromandibular vein. So a muscle, two veins, and a nerve. Superiorly, we said we have the superior temporal vessels. We had the auricular temporal nerve running down to supply it, as well as the external acoustic meatus. And here is the big old parotid gland, which is a major salivary gland, and it produces most of the saliva. And yeah, applied anatomy. Uh, here you can have mumps, swellings, cancers of this area, or a free syndrome where there's damage to the auricular temporal nerve, supplying so it, and you have a sweating over the parotid as well as facial flushing. The nerve supply of the parotid gland parasympathetic is glossopharyngeal nerve from the inferior cervical inferior salivary nucleus, sorry, coming down to the otic ganglion, the glossopharyngeal nerve or cranial nerve number nine. And yeah, sensory, auricular temporal, as, as well as great auricular nerve. And that's it for the parotid gland, guys. I hope you guys learned something today. If you have any more questions, drop them in the comment section below. You can also follow us on Instagram at DN underscore medical series. And just don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the DNN medical series. All right. See you soon. Bye.